Okay, so, um, you know, I think that this does segue nice to the, the, the relapse setting. Um, we're hopeful our patients will do great with first line um, chemotherapy um, and um, atezolizumab or now and with dervalumab, but unfortunately the majority of these patients will still um, progress on this treatment. So, um, so Jamie, um, we'll start with you. What's your second line, then your third line therapy for the for this population? After chemoimmunotherapy? Yeah. Yeah, we're in a bit of a pickle. I think it depends a bit on their disease burden. Um, for patients with CNS metastases, I still do lean towards temozolomide. I know the data is quite limited, but perhaps it's institutional bias. It tends to be well tolerated and has great CNS penetration. And I echo what's been said before. We all have moved away from topotecan. Um, so however we can, whether it's a clinical trial or a standard other line agent such as arenotecan, uh, paclitaxel, CAV rarely, we have a plethora of options that are really selected based on bone marrow reserve and disease distribution. And third line? The same argument goes again if we get there. Yeah, so the, so the question which I'm, I'm sort of leading to is, would you go back to I.O.? I would uh, not, so I didn't even grasp that question. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, Tofik you know, does something a little differently, so. Yeah, uh, I, I think an I.O. failure is an I.O. failure, so I would certainly, if someone was robust enough to consider a re-challenge, um, most likely would seek out a clinical study. I don't think I would clinically re-prescribe immunotherapy with just limited confidence that we would really right. see efficacy in that population. Right, I mean, I think that's right. I think the third line approvals, you know, really, you know, were in the pre-IO um, era, you know, um, pre, you know, er, pre, or the pre-first uh, line IO era, so, um, you know, but if somebody, you know, had really high TMB, you know, you may want to think about either a trial, yeah, a tumor TMB, you know, a trial or an IO combination, like bringing CTLA-4 maybe, you know, right. something like that. Right, I think the, so. the combination arm of Caspian will be really interesting, and yeah. I think we'll learn a lot from that, and particularly to, to ask ourselves that question. So when that reads out, if there's a greater signal, if our patients who have failed a PD-1, PD-L1 agent, should we be challenging them with combination? I don't think we've seen any promise there in non-small cell. But we see that a lot in, in the community where people progress after, you know, um, first line chemo IO and then do go to second line IO and, and it's just kind of a data free zone really right now. Tiziana, first your second and third line therapies. Can I go back to the re-challenge question? What about re-challenging with the platinum side alone? I mean, you failed the IO and you know the IO stopped working and you can say okay this is IO refractory but depending on the interval if there's still platinum sensitivity yeah. I actually go back to the platinum atopa side and we've seen data retrospective data in the non-small cell lung cancer scenario where there's reports that perhaps after IO patients respond better to docetaxel and will we see something like that in the small cell population so I actually go back to the platinum atopa side if I can, if that patient is still platinum sensitive and can tolerate a platinum um, again, that's what I would try first. Um, my second line option, if they're not platinum eligible or if they have been rechallenged with a platinum already, then I would go with probably a renotecan on a weekly basis. It's been well tolerated. There's less cytopenias and there's activity based on phase two data. It's kind of, again, you know, trying to avoid the toxicities of topotecan and trying to still identify patients that are motivated enough to get chemotherapy and that we think will benefit from these agents. And then, you know, as you can see, if NCCN has multiple options, it's really choosing based on toxicities you're trying to avoid. Single age activity is very similar between a lot of these agents. And then certainly a clinical trial, I think, really is what we're focusing on in trying to consider um, how do we move the field forward in the second and third line setting. I agree that I wouldn't go back to an IO in the third line if they've unfortunately already had their disease progress on immunotherapy. So you don't, you don't, do you think there's a difference between PD-L1 and PD-1 antibodies? If you progress on a PD-L1, do you think they should get a PD-1 afterwards? Not really. 
And you know, when we saw the second line data for atezolizumab, the response rate is 2.3%. That study in the, you know, it was a smaller study, but in that second line setting, um, the atezolizumab study didn't meet the overall response rate at six weeks, which was primary endpoint. I don't have any reason to believe that PD-1 versus PDL one would make a significant difference that would change a clinical decision to try one versus the other. Yeah, I'm of the same opinion that um, re-challenge outside of a well-designed, biologically-based clinical trial is, um, is the right strategy here. Uh, but if we look at the patient, so when a patient goes on chemo IO, if they don't progress immediately, uh, at least if they progress immediately, we can conclude that they did not respond to the chemotherapy because that's what we know that's what is driving the initial response. Uh, but if they do respond and then you have that durable response that translates into survival advantage, um, I will agree with Tiziana that there's opportunity there for redefining what our platinum sensitive relapse strategy should be. So the French study helped to answer that question a little bit, uh, where they took patients with platinum sensitive relapse small cell and randomized them to napaclitaxel versus IO. And not surprisingly, uh, the progression-free survival on that study is, you know, miles apart when you look at the napaclitaxel arm compared to the IO arm, it was much better. Now, eventually the overall survival did not look different, but it would suggest that if you have a patient who is actively progressing and you want to address that progression, you're really better off with cytotoxic agent rather than IO. So I uh, wouldn't want us to lose sight of the fact that when we have chemosensitive patients who progress, retreating them with a platinum doublet if, it's, if they meet the requirement will still be a reasonable option. Now the question is, do you re-challenge them along with the IO or do you not? We don't know. It's all at this point data free and I think, I hope the data is there before the practice gets set so that we don't all get set in our ways and then you can no longer answer the question in a systematic manner.